on top of the roof of the Riverside Church in New York City, that historic congregation, there is a statue of an angel blowing a trumpet, celebrating the glory of God. And from the position of the statue, it looks as if the angel is looking out on the entire city, watching over people's lives. The angel is a part of the 1930s structure of that historic church built by Rockefeller. And in 1996, there was this terrible storm. The wind was blowing so hard, it blew the trumpet off of the statue and it landed on a Mercedes in the parking lot. In 1997, they recast the trumpet and put it back on the statue. And over the years, the statue has become known as the resurrection angel. And Dr. James Forbes, former pastor of Riverside Church, once said, the resurrection angel knows what time it is and speaks a word about which way we should go. That Easter knows what time it is and which way we should go. That we don't have to glance down at the watch on our wrist and read the hour or minute hand. That on Easter morning, we witness the stead fast love of God that calls us forward and allows us to leave other things behind. Because the love of God is stronger than death. And we saw this all throughout the life of Jesus as he was reaching out to care for the poor and the sick, the suffering and the oppressed, that he brought the outcast back into community with others. He provided relief and comfort for shame and regret. He forgave people's sins, and he extended the grace of God, and he proclaimed release for the captives. That on Good Friday, we feared that that was the end of the journey. But Easter knows what time it is. It calls us forward and allows us to leave other things behind. The Gospel of John says Mary got up early this morning while it was still dark and she made her way to the tomb. And when she arrived, the stone had already been rolled away. And she feared that under the secrecy of the night, somebody came and stole Jesus' body. So she ran back to tell a couple others, and they ran with her to inspect the scene. And standing there outside the tomb, Mary looked up and saw Jesus. She didn't recognize him. She assumed he was the gardener until Jesus said her name, Mary. And immediately her eyes were opened. Now, if we had gotten up early this morning and we had been standing there with Mary outside the tomb and we feared that someone had come and stolen Jesus' body and then we heard him say our names and our eyes were opened, our first response might be to reach out and to hold Jesus tightly, that what was lost now is found. 
But Jesus said to Mary and to us, do not hold on to me. Because Jesus was going to leave. That on Easter morning, we might be tempted to hold on to Jesus. But the resurrection knows what time it is. And Easter is not a time to stand still. That Easter is not an ending. It is a beginning. And when we open up the pages of the book of Acts and we start flipping through them, we see the good news does not stand still. Instead, it spreads throughout all Judea to Jew and Gentile alike. It is why Peter said those bold words. God does not show partiality. But perhaps we've all seen that birthday gift go wrong. Maybe it was that year where we got our cousin a label maker. We just ran out of ideas that year and we thought, well, this is practical. He's a practical guy. But when he tore that gift open, he was far more excited than we expected him to be. And a couple weeks later, when we went by his house, we realized why everything was labeled. Like everything. The kitchen drawers were labeled so you knew where to put the forks. And the pantry was labeled so you could find the chips and salsa. We were afraid the dog was going to be labeled. But that's the tendency of labels. That when we put a label on something, the world feels more secure. The only problem is labels don't just clarify and identify. They can reduce something or someone to less than who they are. And without realizing it, we can show partiality. But love, love is not a label. Labels are nouns. Love is a verb. And verbs are always in motion, like Easter is. Verbs are always at work. They stretch and challenge us. They comfort and nurture us. They bring life out of death. That it is, as Chuck Poole says, we're not talking about love the nice now. We're talking about love the brave verb. And love's always building something. But there are times it can feel like that road work on the interstate. You know, it never seems to end. We think to ourselves, can you not get rid of the orange cones? Can we not leave things the way they are? At least for a little while. I mean, can't Jews and Gentiles just half separate lanes. Wouldn't that work? Especially if we labeled them carefully. But Easter, Easter is always at work because God does not show partiality. 
that on Easter morning, we cannot hold on to Jesus. We have to let him go so we can continue to follow him. Standing there next to the tomb early this morning, Mary was asked, as Gardner Taylor says, a very strange question. Mary, why are you weeping? And I'm pretty sure that none of us is going to drive by the cemetery on the way home and pull over into that parking lot because we see someone there crying in a cemetery, standing next to the grave of a loved one and ask, why are you weeping? We know why they are weeping. Death is hard. And life is hard. But there is something Mary did not know. Something that Mary discovered this morning. That Mary discovered that love is stubborn. Love will not quit. Love does not stand on the sidelines or leave us all alone, that love does not hesitate to help even in the face of death. That love is persistent and faithful. That love shows up time and time Again, that what looks like an ending turns out to be a beginning. That death is not final. Love is final. And it tells us what time it is and which way we should go. That we might be tempted this morning to hold on to Jesus. But Jesus says, let me go, calling us forward out of death and into life. Because love is a brave verb. It does not show partiality. It does not run from the darkness and it brings life out of death. That we cannot hold on to it. All we can do is follow it. Because Christ is risen. Indeed. Amen.